Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today I want to talk about something quite interesting. Today I want to talk about the need for Dungeons & Dragons to claim its title, to claim its heritage, to claim its right as the first iSport. Let's get into it. We're going to ask who, what, when, where, why, how. Let's go. Alright, so um, who? Who should claim Dungeons & Dragons title as the first eye sport. I'm hearing you, well, you know, I think some people would think it's going to be Hasbro, Hasbro Gaming. By the way, Wizards of the Coast at this point is just kind of a shell. Um, I don't really think it's necessary at all. Hasbro Hasbro owns Dungeons & Dragons. They have it in a, a little shell called Wizards of the Coast. I'm not, in, I don't think it's that important that Wizards of the Coast owns it. Um, Hasbro is unlikely to do this unless... The D and D community asked for it. Okay, so that's who the D and D community should ask for this. Should ask for the world to recognize Dungeons and Dragons as the first eye sport. Okay, um, now what? Um, what should we be claiming? Uh, what should be claimed? So D and T should claim its title as the first eye sport. And what is an eye sport? All right. So first of all, there are many sports. Actually, by far, the most close analogy that I think should be applied to this is American football is a sport, okay? And then uh, League of Legends is uh, a very active eSport game, okay? Uh, actually, I'm sorry, excuse me. League of Legends is a very active eSport, okay? Uh, League of Legends is one instance of an eSport segment, okay? Uh, and that's electronic sport, all right? Now, currently, no iSports exist. What is an iSport? Well, first of all, I think there are three things that are important for Dungeons & Dragons to think about when it thinks about uh, I sport, being an iSport, the first the first iSport. One, it's interactive. Dungeons & Dragons is interactive, so it, this would be the first interactive sport. It's not enough to say it would be interactive. There are other sports. You could say that other sports are interactive. I think Dungeons and Dragons would be far more interactive than sports or esports. Um, but that's not all. That this this I in the I sport actually carries three loads, right? Uh, there there are three load bearing columns within that I. Okay. Uh, next is intellectual. It'd be the first. It'd be the first inter interactive sport, intellectual sport. And last, informational sport. So Dungeons and Dragons would be an eye sport, a interactive sport, a intellectual sport, and a informational sport. Okay, and this is really critical because there really aren't any eye sports at eye sports at this point. Um, and just like the video game industry had to say, "Hey, we're going to be sport, we're going to be esports now," Dungeons and Dragons needs to say, "Hey, we, there's no." There's no activity in the world like ours. A lot of people think we're a game, um, but I think a better understanding of Dungeons and Dragons is as an eye sport. Okay, not just as an eye sport, but the first eye sport, the first truly interactive, intellectual, and informational sport. And I will say, uh, us claiming this title does come from the work that the video game industry has done to claim the esport title. And if they're worthy of that title. Dungeons and Dragons is absolutely worthy of the iSport title. I will say, I know there are people who are still contesting whether eSport is a real thing. I believe it is, and I believe that Dungeons and Dragons is really the first iSport, and we as the D&D community need to encourage Hasbro Graining to claim its title as the first iSport. Okay? So that's just what I'm talking about. That's the what. Why? First and foremost, the D&D community deserves it. D&D community is filled with brilliant people. Uh, who are very kind and um, and uh, empathetic and brilliant and creative and um, you know just a, a wonderful community. I think the D and D community deserves to claim this title that they truly do own. Okay, why scale and prominence? Dungeons and Dragons is, in my in my opinion, the most massively under, uh, misunderstood, most massively undervalued intellectual property in the world right now. I'm fully convinced of that. I believe that Dungeons and Dragons is exactly like Marvel in the '80s, sold off parts of itself to Sony and uh, who knows, and Fox and a million other places because they were they were going broke because nobody understood what they had. Nobody understood that our entire cinematic 
uh, the, the entire American cinema industry someday would be transformed by the characters in comic books, in Marvel comic books, right? And that it would remap the future of the entire United States American cinema industry, right? And I believe that Dungeons and Dragons is exactly the same, just a massively, massively misunderstood, mis uh, uh, undervalued intellectual property that we will be packing for probably a century, okay? Gary Gygax delivered this amazing box that is Dungeons and Dragons, and we will be unpacking it for a century, in my opinion. We're barely understanding what it is. I think I understand what it is, maybe a little more than most people, but I'm, I also recognize that we're still unpacking this thing, right? And so I really think it is the first eye sport. So we need scale and prominence. Well, what do I mean by this? What, 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 how much scale, how much prominence? What do I mean here? Here you go. Uh, I want the scale and prominence that American football has. That's what D&D &D deserves. Actually, a little more. Uh, so right now, everybody in the world knows exactly what uh, American football is. Uh, when, you know, the... Um, Super Bowl is played, uh, hundreds of, like, half a billion people watch it, like hundreds of millions of people, maybe a quarter billion people watch it, maybe a billion, some, some mass, some some huge fraction of a billion people or more. It's incredible, right? And, and uh, also, American football is involved in culture, politics, industries, economies. Um, this, is, this is the scale and prominence that, in my opinion... I don't know if American football deserves that scale and prominence anymore, but Dungeons and Dragons sure as heck does. Okay, so let's continue to explore the why. Okay, S stadium subsidy. Why stadium subsidies? Stadium subsidies. Stadium subsidies. All right. If your sport, literally, uh, governments they could be as small as a city's government, maybe bigger than that, maybe whole states or maybe national. Right. They're going to be like, we need to subsidize that stadium. We need to give you millions of dollars, tens, hundreds, a billion or more, right? Stadium subsidies are massive, right? And I'll tell you right now, the idea that American football gets stadium subsidies and Dungeons and Dragons gets nothing, right? What, what, wait, what does Chicago owe Dungeons and Dragons? What does Minneapolis owe Dungeons and Dragons? What does Miami owe Dungeons and Dragons? Let's find out. Right, because I'll tell you right now, if they ever gave a dollar to a to an American football team, they certainly should be considering how much they're going to give Dungeons and Dragons for its iSport sport league. All right, so that that's my opinion. All right, so stadium subsidies, money, and not a small amount, a big amount, right? Like millions, hundreds of millions, perhaps. Even I think I think I would be surprised here at all that some city has had put in a billion or more dollars into different stadiums at different times, right? All right, so uh, so let's keep let's keep moving here. All right, so stadium subsidies we talked about. Why? Uh, let's continue to talk about the why. Here you go. So why am I saying that D&D &D should be elevated to an American football? Uh, um, uh, because D&D &D is now, and American football is the past, right? So here's the thing, right? I think people liked American football, because America for a long time was a physical labor nation. We did a lot of physical labor. We built things, um, and there were a lot of people doing physical labor. That is, virtually every single physical labor job is being automated as quickly as possible and will probably be gone within 10 or 20 years, right? Um, and no no one who is being responsible would build a career in physical, release, in physical labor now unless they were choosing for specific reasons to suffer considerable economic woes in the future. Some people might choose that. It doesn't seem wise to me, right? Knowledge work is going through the roof, right? Now, what does America need right now? Uh, to be dedicating money to stadiums to something that is far more aligned to physical labor, right? And would help somebody be faster and stronger, right? Or a sport that would help someone be more interactive, more socially interactive, higher uh, have higher intellectual abilities and have more information uh, at their fingertips. Because the reality is when you, as a player, when you begin playing a character and as a DM, you you gain information in order to better pers in order to better be those roles, right? So the reality is uh, Dungeons and Dragons helps people to be uh, more literate, more mathematically sound, and more empathetic, 
because they inhabit other roles. They inhabit other identities, and that makes people more empathetic. So the reality is American football is the past. D&D is the future, right? And we should be getting stadium subsidies for our eye sport, not for a sport that is, you know, that celebrates physical abilities. It seems ridiculous to me. It's, it's our past. It's not our future. D&D is our future, right? And that's okay, right? Football's like, what, 80, 90, 100 years old, right? We have a fresh new property, which is 47 years old, and really has barely been unpacked, okay? All right, so uh, when? Now! Let's do this. So, and it starts literally with this video. The, I am part of the D&D community. I am calling for Asbro Gaming to seize its title, right? Uh, actually, and we'll talk about how in a minute. To to claim the title of D&D as the first eye sport. Okay? Where? United States of America only. Okay? Uh, uh, I'm not sure if everybody's aware of this. Uh, Dungeons & Dragons is an American game. It's created by uh, Gary Gygax. Still hold, held by an American company. Uh, still built in America. Right, right here, it's it's made in the USA, baby. Right, it's made right over in uh, Seattle. Okay, and um, and the reality is, we need to explore this as a as from the from the the native country first, right? And so, American is uh, Dungeons and Dragons is just an American game. We absolutely, I think, I would love to take this international at some point, but we we got to do it where D and D was born, where D and D matters most, where Dungeons and Dragons origin still is. Which is America, okay? How? Uh, so how 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 do we do this? Uh, yeah, I feel like we have to be really careful about this nowadays. <laughs> Just talking about how do we get this done? We need to do this carefully, respectfully, pace, patiently, and peacefully. As the D and D community, we should carefully, respectfully, patiently, peacefully request Asbro Gaming to claim its title as the first I sport. And then as we go forward, and we discuss this on Twitter and a million other social media sites, we need to be careful, we need to be respectful, we need to be patient, and we need to be peaceful. All that is my opinion. What do you think? Do you agree with me that Dungeons and Dragons should claim its title as the first iSport? Do you agree that stadium subsidies from Chicago, New York, San Diego, San Francisco, Minneapolis, um, you know, and 50 other cities... Stadium stadium subsidies should go to Dungeons and Dragons, and not a dollar more should be devoted to American football. Uh, or do you disagree and think that <laughs> that Dungeons and Dragons is a game and not an ice sport? I guess some people might still think that. I don't know. Yeah, if you do, I'd love to hear your rationale for that. In my opinion, a little dated opinion. Let me know in the comments below. Please consider liking and subscribing, and have a wonderful millennium.